Okay. Is this colder than Iceland? <gasps> Hi, I'm Maddie and I'm in the sea just off the Cornish coast in England. It is absolutely beautiful, but it's also pretty cold and very salty, which is why I'm here to show you how we get this sea salt from this. But for that, first I need to do something. And so our adventure begins with me swimming in the salty sea. I'm on my way here to a factory at the bottom of this cliff. Hold on. Whoa! Which is as close to the sea as we can get, and for good reason. Welcome to the Sea Salt Pump House. Inside this small building right by the sea is a super powerful pump that is sucking and pushing 60,000 litres of seawater up to the factory every single hour. The seawater travels through pipes like this under the ground all the way up the hill. This is where the seawater arrives and it's stored in these massive tanks before it makes its way inside. This is the filtration room where the seawater comes to get a really good clean. Come on, let me show you something. This is an absolute filter, but what does it do? Well, it looks like a really long sock and it gets fixed inside these filtration tanks. Now, it might not look like it, but this material is covered in teeny tiny holes that are small enough to let seawater through, but any bits get left behind. It's kind of like a long sieve. Now, this is really cool. Inside this very normal looking pipe is actually a special beam of UV light. And as the seawater passes through it, that UV light kills off any bugs or nasties left in the seawater that could make us poorly. How cool is that? For the next part, if I want to be a salt maker, I have to dress like one. It's so hot. Wow, look at, look at, look at everyone. Hi, gang, look at the team. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's so hot. Philip, how hot is it? Well, it's obviously, officially, it's only about 21 degrees Celsius, but in reality, 38.9% and 66% humidity. That's hotter than that, I it's swear. It's salt, not good for humans. Oh my perfect God. Salt. It's cooling down by the warm air that's being blown into the room. But this room is so humid, it's so damp that it is sweaty. This feels cool in comparison. Whew. There we go. Okay, this is the very hot and steamy evaporation room where the salty, clean seawater is about to get poured into these evaporation tanks. There's a good reason why it is so steamy and damp in this room. We say that it's humid. It's because there's a lot of water in the atmosphere because of all the evaporating that's happening. But what is evaporation? Oh, hi, Beach Maddie here to help. So if you've ever swum in the sea, you might have noticed that as you dry off, your skin starts to feel tight and even um, tastes a bit salty. Well, here's why. So when you come out of the water, the sun and the warmth of your body heats up the water that's left on your skin. Now this heat makes the water change from a liquid into a gas. We call this change evaporation that gas can then escape into the air and it leaves behind the salt in the form of tiny salt crystals. Exactly the same thing is happening inside the salt factory, just on a much bigger scale. So the water evaporates into this baking hot room, which is why it's so steamy. Less water in the tanks equals less space for the salts to hang out, so they fuse together to form crystals. And after about eight hours, enough salt crystals have formed that they can be raked out by hand. Whoa, look at those crystals. I cannot believe how much salt we're getting out of just those tanks of water. The water is phenomenally salty. Look at it. It's like raking snow or diamonds. These salt crystals are so clear and clean. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Can I 
try. Who's got? Is it hard work? Yes. It looks. <laughs> okay. I'm so. I'm just like dripping with sweat, so I'll do my best. How do you make it pile up so neatly? How does mine look so different to yours? <laughs> look at these big flaky, crunchy bits. You've made it look like perfect snow. How did you do that? Just practice. Oh my word, what? No! And um, Sean, do you think I would make it as a salt maker? Of course. Yeah. Really? It's really? Great. Yeah. Genuinely. There you go, maybe, maybe. If YouTube doesn't work out, you might find me here on the Cornish coast. Yeah! Oh, great. Wasn't that fun? I love that. It's not as easy as it looks. Um, Sean, experienced salt maker. That's his pile. That's mine. <laughs> OK. All right. Let's get out of here. This is the drying room. So the damp sea salt is loaded into this hopper and it makes its way into the shaky drying tank. Now, in there, hot air is blowing around the salt as it shakes around, drying it off. Then the dry salt comes along these shaky conveyor belts and the belt is like a sieve so that the small grains fall into one tub and the pyramid flaky shaped sea salt goes into another. It's incredible just how much work it takes to get salt out of the sea. The same sea that I was swimming in just now. Piles and piles of crunchy crystals raked up, dried, shaken and sorted. But this isn't the end of its journey. The fresh, flaky, mineral-rich sea salt extracted straight from the ocean is boxed up and prepared for the next part of its journey, which is a 10-mile road trip to packaging at the Salt House. But whilst we travel, what is salt anyway? Well, salt is a rock that we eat. In fact, it's the only rock that we eat. It's a type of mineral called sodium chloride and that's originally found in the Earth's crust. In some parts of the world, it can even be dug up from the Earth, but lots of it ends up in the sea thanks to rainwater. Rainwater dissolves minerals like salts from the rocks on land, which releases them into our rivers. The rivers then act like a transportation system, delivering those salts from the rocks into the sea. Ooh, <laughs> we're in a bush. <laughs> Crikey. There's so much salt in our seawater, it's hard to get your head around. 50 million billion tons of it. <laughs> right, looks like we're here. Whoa! <laughs> this is the final stage of our sea salt journey, where it's put into pot, packed up and sent to the shop. You might have noticed that the salt has changed colour and that's because it's been mixed with pepper to make a special salt and pepper blend. It gets put into this hopper and then it travels up this conveyor belt, which is a little bit like a slide for sea salt. At the top, the salt drops into this machine, which portions the salt out into pots. The part which drops the salt into the pots is called the trouser leg, and I think you can see why. How cool is that machine? It helps pack 9,000 tonnes of salt every single day. That's the same way as about six cars. Unbelievable amount of salt. And to think the salt in here was not long ago in the sea along the Cornish coast. Incredible. Woo! So the next time you season your chips or take a dip, you'll know how the salt came from the sea. Thank you so much for joining us on this adventure. Subscribe for more, stay curious, and I'll see you soon. Right, it's time to get out. Let's go. Oh, look at that.